Good morning. Yeah, check your devices. There is sound on this. I can see that I have the mic on, not the line in. <laughs> Interesting how when some of you wa folks watch and you get no sound, the first thing you tell me is, hey, it's you. No, it ain't. <laughs> okay. So it is Tuesday, the 26th of July, and I'm up kind of early. It's 6.19 in the morning. I usually try to sleep through this, you know, get up a couple times for nature around this time, but I always go back to bed, but I'm excited. Yeah, I'll share it with you, okay? And the first part of it is that my interview or my visit, it really was more of a, of a visit with Charles Hayward yesterday was such a kick. Um, you really ought to watch the interview. I do notice that um, my numbers on, well, the Gentle Giant is doing well, but I noticed the other, the interview numbers are slow. I'm not doing this for numbers, but I'm noticing because it's part of the world we live in, okay? What I'm trying to say about the numbers is that some of you folks who tune in mainly for record reviews or whatever it is that you want to get from me, these interviews are are golden. I I watched the Charles Hayward interview um, twice myself because it was so enjoyable. And what a neat guy. I'll tell you what, you can see it in the video and people are commenting about it that they're really um, taken by how comfortable comfortable people are talking to me. Talking to Charles Hayward yesterday was like talking to, to an old friend and we've never met. And I love that, but that's because I sussed the kind of peace person he is in relation to the kind of person that I am. Which is why, again, I keep speaking up about um, trolls and negative people and Republicans in particular. Because if I met you in person, it would become really apparent right, real soon who, whose energy isn't right. I'm telling you, live, you can hide behind the anonymity of leaving a comment here and nobody knows who the fuck you are. But in person, you know, it'd be real obvious who's stubborn and has a problem. Because I'm, <laughs> that's not me. I'm happy about that. So, Charles Hayward. What a cool cat. I hope I do get to meet him. That would be nice. Okay, so along those lines, people, tomorrow I have um, another interview lined up. Well, actually, two. I'll post one when it's done. mentioned to you many times over, over the years how Mew from Denmark are one of my favorite bands. Got to see them live back, oh I forget when. But when I did, I got to meet Jonas Bier, the leader, not leader, the lead singer and I, I would call him probably the, one, the principal writer of the band. I got to meet him and we really hit it off. Me, along with Nick Fackler from um, Indrima, we just we just really hit it off. So um, Jonas has become a long distance friend of mine, and um, I'll be uh, speaking to him tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it because, like I said, I had met him when he came to America, but then when I went to Europe. On tour with Sun Ambulance, we played in Copenhagen, Denmark. And he had told me in, when I met him in Lincoln, well, if you come to um, Europe, well, I'll, I'll come see you. I'll visit you. And he did. He came to the show. It was a blow away. You know, it blew the audience away, too. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but on top of that, tomorrow night is when... Mark Burgess of the Chameleons, and you know I've talked about them over the years. 
and you folks who are like me or are fans, you un you know what I'm talking about. Mark is so underrated and overlooked um, because he doesn't play the celebrity game. He's um he's what you get, and he's from Manchester. And if he's in a foul mood, he'll let you know. He doesn't mince around. I learned, I found it out hanging out with him. But he's playing tomorrow night, and as I, some of you may know, I contacted him, you know, two parts, saying, really looking forward to seeing you again, no expectations about playing because I know it can be such a hassle. But I contacted him a few days ago saying, so at the very least, um, could I interview you for my YouTube channel? You know, that wouldn't, probably wouldn't be too much of an inconvenience. And he said, sure. That'd be great. So, yesterday, I contacted him to just touch base again and say, you know, well, let me know what you think would be better before or after the show for an interview. And then he got back to me and said, um, oh, we'll play it by ear. I'll let you know when I'm in town. By the way, are you ready to play? He asked, he's asked me to play on the show with him. Uh, one song. I just have one song that I'm going to... Tears. Played it with him before. I'm playing the version off of this, not the uh, version from Strange Times. This is... Um, this Never Ending Now CD by the Chameleons. Stripped down versions. Similar to what he's doing on tour now. So I'm, I'm kind of excited, you know. I just talked to Charles Hayward. Um, tomorrow, um, I talked to Jonas Bier of Mew. And then I get to play with Mark Burgess and talk and interview him later that night, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, Stephanie, I saw you. Sister Stephanie, I saw your comments. And it was good talking to you yesterday on the phone. As you saw, the repartee, the camaraderie between me and Charles. Um, I know what kind of people I like. And generally speaking, they're the artistic type. People who give a damn. People whose hearts are not frozen by money or whatever. We talked to Charles about this album, The Camberwell. Now, just while we mentioned it. But if you've never heard this album by... Um, Charles Hayward, and you like this heat, check this out. This is wonderful. It's wonderful. Other records sitting down here because, um, yeah, I'll show you. Played some XTC, um, was it yesterday or the day before? Early, some early stuff, a couple of EPs. 3D EP, Science Friction is really good off of here. She's So Square. And then the EP that comes with the Go 2 album, Go Plus. Uh, some of the stuff on this is like dub and really psychedelic and cool. I got to see XTC before um, Andy Partridge stopped performing live. That was and it was a blazing show. Okay, let me grab this. There it is. So um, two more new uh, records, not new but new to the collection via used records at at uh, homers because like i said I'm, I'm doing good at keeping my expenditures down i saw that they got this in madhouse 6 12 inch 45 the pro uh project that prince started with eric uh the uh, sax player now i have the two albums and i knew about them uh frankly i wasn't aware that there were any singles so i found i saw this and i said what and then I go and look on Discogs, and they have two more. And this is good. Um, it's um, an album version, a remix, and then a, a new version of the track on the album. And I love those graphics. Whoever's idea that was, it was awesome. So I was really glad to get this. And this was less than, if I remember correctly, this was less than 10 bucks. How often does that happen these days? Then I saw this um, listed. I didn't know it. I knew I know who Jan Tiersen is. 
Langyap Session. So um, I grabbed this when I went to grab it as I used. This was still sealed. So um, this is um. I have to listen to it a couple more times. Not sorry, I bought it. Um, the Steve Reich side, and it's also on this beautiful pink kind of marbly, whatever you call that thing they're doing with the vinyl now. Isn't that nice? One side of this is one side of this is a Steve Reich interpretation of well, it's Steve Reich's piano phase, I guess, and it's very static. It goes for a long time and it changes very little. So while that was playing, I got up and did, did some things rather than trying to give it deep listening. I let it work like a wallpaper in the background and that worked really good. Okay, so that's where that's at. So people, oh, I'll, I'll go a little further. I just saw some CDs that I, a lot of times I forget to mention CDs. So this is an album that I don't have on vinyl and I burned it because I've never seen a copy in Omaha. But for some reason I started playing this again the other day. Bombay Bicycle Club's album, A Different Kind of Fix. This, I love this album and it's a repeater. People, tr people you send me uh, links and you try to turn me on to stuff and the majority of the time the stuff you turn me on to is not what I'm looking for. You don't get me. You don't, you know, and I understand that, you know, uh, I don't expect, I have no expectation, but I know that generally speaking, when you look at me, you, you're not going to understand what I really like. This is something that I really like, and it doesn't have, and it wouldn't be like, oh, let me find something that sounds like that for Derek. That's not it. I can't even hardly tell you exactly what it is about this that I love, besides, you know, besides the just the obvious the music the way it flows the singer's voice he's the son of some um really famous um irish folk singer i think uh it's like a bleat he like bleats you know it's very emotional um, um but the music it's pop music but it's joyous not joyous well yeah though there is an energy to the up to I just love this okay a different kind of fix now I have another album of theirs the one after this I like it and it's it's pretty much just as good but these songs in particular just stick in my head and I love that when that happens okay I know what I like and it's not what people think I'm supposed to like the last few things that people have suggested to me have not hit the mark even close, okay? So I'll tell you this. When Charles mentioned the Tony Williams with um, Bill Laswell and Derek Bailey, I had heard of the Arcana um, sessions with Bill Laswell and Tony Williams, but it, I didn't remember that Derek Bailey was involved. So I did go and listen to some of that yesterday, and uh, Derek Bailey is, again, something that you need to expose yourself to when it comes to guitar and music in general. Okay? Matcha. Matcha, however you say this name. Don't know much about this band. Don't know why they're not still around. Very unique sound. This is real good. Um, see it another way. I think they use some ethnic instruments in here, so it's not a, it's like a, oh, it's, it's just freaking good. Real good. All aspects of this are good. One more thing. Did I show this the other day? I was getting into some uh, stereo lab Ocelons from the Anti-Sun, the box set they put out years ago with a lot of B-sides and then, then a DVD. Love this band love this band okay so I will continue to mix my thoughts about the world with my, my thoughts on music because there's no reason not to and the thing that I am noticing and want to continue speaking out is 
just a lot of the agitation and problems that we're having in the world are caused by heartless, ignorant, or kind of stupid, or selfish, or people, or people have some kind of problem. We have problems, so why are you folks creating problems? We need unity, and we need peace, and you folks are actively upsetting the apple carton. I don't understand why. At this point in history, I don't understand why we're still so stupid and keep repeating the same mistakes. I'm blown away that so many people have succumbed to cult thinking, Jim Jones thinking, this whole shit with, yeah, I'll bring him up again because it's a dangerous situation. You folks that try to come over here with an attitude like, oh, he's still talking about Trump? Are you dead in the heart? You know, or, or are you part of the problem, which is apparently the case, because that the whole thing happening with that right-wing, insane, psych, psychotic movement, it's a cult, and it's, it's really not helping anyone. Okay, so I'll just continue to speak out, all right? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm very, very happy. Stephanie, I know you're watching this, and the rest of the family, Karim and the, and the, and the, the uh, twins, love you all so much. And these little experiences mean the world to me, and that's, again, why I share them and talk openly about what's happening with me, because, again, there's no reason not to, and this is what I wanted. I did not want what Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons wanted. I did not want all the money. I didn't want the rock and roll trip. I got the I got what I wanted. I have it now. I've had it for a while and it just grows. I have the part that I was intrigued by as I watched as I grew up and started to really understand music and the connection. Beatlemania really blew my mind open about that. I have the part that I want, which no one can take from me. Interesting that people below me, beneath me, come over and try. <laughs> and so I point this stuff out, and that's another quote, I forget who said it, but people who are achieving or are doing well are not the ones that are going to be attacking you. It's always the people below you. And it's like, rather than raise their own game, they think they're going to do something by trying to attack yours. I see it coming. So I'm going to keep addressing it because it's part of the, it's part of the um, drama of human humanity. It will never stop. We, these, it's just part of the whole circle of humanity. There's good people, there's in-between people, and there's shitty motherfuckers. And, <laughs> and I'm going to call you a shitty motherfucker. Justify. See, that's another thing I, could, I can teach. I used to teach about this. There's a difference between just name calling and re being and and justifiably responding to something that happened that unjust it's unjustified. People coming over here leaving their, their trashy comments. It's unjustified. I didn't do nothing to uh, cause that. So that's why I speak like this because more people need to learn this and build up their defenses uh, even more than defenses but to speak through it and say listen what you're up to is bullshit and I'm calling you on your bullshit that's what I'm doing okay <laughs> I'll do it as much as I feel the need to take care folks and watch the 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 interview with Charles Hayward it was wonderful okay